energy forecast for Wednesday, May 8th. So today we are going to see the moon in Taurus. Of course, we're coming out of this new moon potency that just popped off in the wee hours early morning for the majority of us in this particular time zone. And of course, we are going to be sitting in this new moon energy for the next couple of days. The new moon in Taurus is going to go void, of course, at 5.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Gemini energy at 7.22 p.m. So the transition out of Taurus energy to Gemini energy is always a welcomed one. We get to kind of leave the physical body, leave that heaviness, leave that weight behind of being present in our physical form. We get to move up into the mental plane. Curiosity takes over. We just got planted with a new seed, a new idea, a new goal, if you will. The Gemini energy going to help us kind of ask the right questions to get the right answers in order to formulate a path, a plan, a strategy. This is when we are kind of coming out of our shells. That Taurus energy had us a little bit more introverted than normal. The Gemini energy brings us out to kind of interact with the world around us. That's how epiphanies, aha moments pop off. And so we are going to feel that shift, kind of push us into that headspace, push us into that particular arena where we have to explore different ideas, different concepts, and of course, start piecing a plan together. Now, we're still very much in the new moon energy. If you haven't listened to the new moon forecast, going to recommend you do that. If you haven't downloaded your May Zodiac forecast, going to recommend you do that as well. There is the moon guide that you can join if you want to do a deep dive and see where this particular energy is manifesting in your life, in your chart. But overall, we are definitely coming back down to earth. We are grounded. We are rooted in this physical form. We are still evaluating our options, our opportunities. We still have some epiphanies, some aha moments to pop off that will definitely give us a better understanding of the lay of the land. Now, there are nine different aspects taking place here today, all nine involving the moon, which means that this is a moon day and coming out of a new moon we have a little bit of time to settle. We have a little bit of time to kind of percolate. We have a little bit of time to kind of adjust and redefine, emotionally speaking, what it is now that we're being called to pursue. We kick the day off with the moon in this Taurus energy, semi-squaring Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, and his rulership and Aries energy. We're building in boldness and bravery and courage to do the hard things, to tap into that warrior spirit, that mood, that attitude to, that will absolutely encourage us to bust through the first set of challenges and obstacles that we are likely going to face as we kind of blaze this brand new path. Now, this is a semi-square. There's tension and conflict here. Mars has ants in his pants. He's growing a little bit restless. He wants to take action. He wants to make moves. But emotionally speaking, we really haven't got our bearings. We haven't really, I'm going to say, solidified our comfort, our peace, our harmony in this present moment. We go very low and slow in the Taurus energy. And this is a particular conflict because of course, we're trying to remain in this present moment. We're trying to stand still, if you will, to get a lay of the land. And Mars is over here almost throwing a tantrum uh, because he just wants to take action, make moves and move forward. Now, the moon is going to make a positive interaction, first with Chiron, the wounded healer, second with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, both of them in Aries energy. If you listen to the forecast and you did the work on your own chart through the moon guide, we really had a beautiful opportunity here with Mercury and Chiron, not only giving us a little bit more clarity dating back to March 20th, but now we're starting to understand things a little bit better. We're starting to, let's say, perceive the hints and clues coming at us in a way that is helping to paint a bigger, broader picture on what it is that we need to do, what we have to pursue. And of course, recognize where we've already done a huge amount of growth, a huge amount of healing. Now, when the moon interacts with Mercury, that means that our heart and our head, we're on the same page. 
We're cultivating a new idea. We're building in our energies, our excitement, our passion, our desire. We're understanding the options, the opportunities that we do have to take baby steps, nonetheless, slow and steady baby steps in a different path, in a different direction. This is the foundation that we need to strengthen before we go ahead and start adding things to our lives. Now, the moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Uranus first, Jupiter second. Both of them are in Taurus energy. Again, we're still in the vibration of having those unexpected epiphanies pop off, unexpected events, wildcard energies pop off to show us where it is that, again, we have to understand the options and opportunities available to us. Maybe you're not comfortable in making the changes that you have to make, but that's a you problem, not a universal problem. There are still some paths that we need to explore. There is still a certain part of us closed off to opening ourselves up to trying something new. Again, reminder, We've been praying for change. Change is knocking on the door. Suddenly, we're curled up in a ball pretending that we don't hear the knocking. Why? Because Taurus energy is a fixed sign, meaning we like to resist change even though we have been praying for it. So again, Uranus is here giving us a jolt, a lightning bolt, if you will, in our inner realm to kind of get out of our own damn way. And Jupiter is trying to instill us with optimism, with confidence, trying to show us where it is that we're blocking the options and opportunities that we have available to us at this particular point in time. Now, this is, I'm going to say, a positive energy. So it's going to illuminate where it is that, yeah, we're being stubborn, but at the same time, kind of like get out of your own way so that we can move on. That's what we've been praying for. That's what we've been waiting for. So why are we turning a blind eye now to the path that is now opening up for us, unfolding for us to actually move on? Again, a little bit of an aha moment, if you will, connecting the dots on where it is that, again, we are refusing to answer the door, even though opportunity is knocking. Now, the last aspect that we have before the moon goes void, of course, is a sextile, beautiful interaction with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. We love Pisces and Taurus energy working together because Pisces energy kind of downloads us with an inspiration, an intuitive calling, if you will, a dream, an idea that our higher self needs us to pursue. We're able to bring it to life, give it some sort of form, tangibility, if you will, through the Taurus energy. So emotionally speaking, this is us kind of getting a reminder. We're renewing our soul and our spirit. We're reminding ourselves what it is that we have a want, need, and desire to actually pursue. We are getting a little bit of a flashback, if you will, of the goal, the vision, the dream that we've been trying to manifest, especially that we should have been focused on through this new moon energy. This is just building us up slow and steady in order to kind of pivot and start pursuing the path that our higher self needs us to pursue. 5.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon goes void, of course. This is where things get shaky, uncertain, unstable, if you will. And while the moon is void, we are going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. So Saturn's going to give us a little bit of a reality check, if you will, try to stabilize us while this turbulence is taking place in our emotional realm. Saturn is kind of reminding us that we've been through worse. We have a good, I'm going to say, resume history, if you will, of being faced with new opportunities to break away, to start something new. And we have been semi-successful in doing just that. So this is a reminder that, first of all, we have to tap into a different belief system, believing that we are worthy and deserving of happiness of joy, of safety, security, of stability, recognizing where it is that we have to have more willpower and discipline to actually initiate new routines, new foundations, new structures that are going to help us get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. 7.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into that Gemini energy. About a half hour later, we have the moon and Gemini energy making its very first aspect, which just happens to be a little bit of a tension point, a little bit of a conflict with a semi-square with, with that north node in Aries energy. So now we're standing back. We're questioning the options, the opportunities. Again, moon and Gemini. Our mental planes are just a processing. We are just percolating on the ifs, ands, and buts, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. We are exploring our options, our opportunities. We're making a list 
of the questions that we have in our adventure, our quest to find those particular answers over the next couple of days. So the North Node is trying to get us on the right path on the solo quest, the solo adventure to pursue a path that will help expand upon our soul's evolution, our soul's growth. This is a personal journey. And so now we're standing back and we're observing the options that we now kind of see unfolding before us, but we need more information. This is putting us in a choice point. And of course, the Gemini energy, very, let's call it dualistic, polarized, divisive, if you will. One twin on one extreme, other twin on the other. Over the next couple of days, we're going to work very hard to meet each other in the middle. And what I mean is meet each other in the middle, the two parts of self. We're meeting ourselves in the middle. And so the last aspect that we have going on here today is super helpful. It is the moon in Gemini energy trining beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself now retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So this is air on air action. This is what gives us our trine. And emotionally speaking, Mr. Pluto helps us to do a deep dive in our psyche to really examine that negative ass narrative, that fair based narrative, those questions that we're kind of bringing up to create more anxiety, more blockages than it is trying to soothe and bring comfort. And so we have an opportunity to make a major shift, major change, not only in our inner narrative, but in our ability to perceive the hints and clues coming at us to make a major change in the path, in the direction, in the planning that of course the moon in Gemini is here to help us do.